Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Beyond the visible, there are dimensions of God waiting to be explored. In interacting with the dimensions of God, Apostle Oromo Sai guides us through these divine realms. Discover how to connect with God's presence in profound and life-changing ways. Experience the depth of God's love and power through worship and prayer. Unlock the mysteries of God's dimensions and transform your spiritual journey, leading you into deeper interactions with the divine. Hallelujah. So this is a strategic season in the agenda of God on the continent of Africa. And uh, the policy of heaven that will drive the revival is cross-pollination. Cross-pollination. So we had to look for genuine men of God in different nations on the continent. And we've been looking for them for 10 years. So that's, uh, that's quite some time. And uh, we found Pastor Ben in Uganda. <laughs> the Lord wishes that a new breed awake on the continent. And he has picked the functionaries that will labor towards the birthing of apostolic Christianity in Africa. So we watch diligently for the signs of approval on the ministers that preach a gospel on the continent of Africa. And we know that five gates were mentioned in God's strategy book. Five gates, the gate of Uganda, the gate of Kenya, the gate of South Africa, the gate of Ghana, and the gate of Nigeria. Five gates. So we began to seek diligently ministers within this gate. And Uganda was the most difficult. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> So, since Uganda was difficult, we now sponsor the meeting to invade uh, Uganda at the MTN Arena. After a time of very strong prayers, the Lord opened my eyes. We were sitting like this on the minister's He said, that one, that one there, is my own. That one is my own. So I went to Pastor Ben and I told him, I'm preaching in your church tomorrow. <laughs> So it was the Lord that introduced him to me because he didn't say a word. We didn't, we had no time to interact, nothing. But he said that one day. So that's why we are here today. We sneaked into Uganda yesterday afternoon not to preach not to prophesy not to pray just to identify with this man of god and all the years of labor in the wilderness that he went unnoticed we came to identify with all those years as we yeah. so it's a privilege for me to be given the opportunity to speak I think you are older than me, Minister. I, I was trying to calculate. Your wife did not unveil the true figures. She was... Uh, I, maybe so, maybe so. 
BBC. So uh, we came to celebrate him, we came to stand with him, and we'll keep coming sometimes in the night. Because at this point, it's no longer about one man, one captain, one champion. The full force of the African tribe must merge so that we can wage a more continental warfare against the dominion of darkness. The ranks of the missionaries of this age will be filled by the sons of Africa. And so we must drink of the drink that is drink indeed and dance to the beat of the heavenly drum. Once again, we celebrate you. When you find men that have been shaped by intercession, salute them. It's a patient walk that eats into every fabric of the flesh and brings the flesh into captivity so that the Spirit of God and His purposes can prosper. We found such a man Meanwhile, such men are few on the continent right now. Trust me, I am a missionary. I've gone from place to place preaching the gospel in the last the last few years. You see, preachers at this time, I ask for modesty. We we just did a movie. You must have watched it. Oh, you don't know how much trouble. I've been exposed to because of that movie and we didn't make we just acted <laughs> the trouble of which I speak I've come from pastors because they felt that if we continue with this campaign of renewal it might affect the thing they have been building with the left hand of corruption in it so a new breed is about to rise, a new breed without greed, a radical opposition against unrighteousness. The same way Jesus had to come to Africa because of the tyranny of Pharaoh and the principality that was determined to cut his days short, Africa remains a hideout for God and he wants to appear on the continent at this time lord we give you praise we give you glory thank you for what you are doing thank you for the renewed spirit of partnership and brotherhood that is being forged in africa at this time and we believe that great things mighty things will be wrought by your mighty hand as you bring your people together you make us more one with each other. We stand as brethren in the kingdom battles to fight against the corruption that seeks to deplete us of our strength and capacity. We pray that you anoint us afresh. Grant us utterance to be a witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That many will come to the knowledge of salvation many will be raised to become stewards in your house to serve your will we surrender completely to you O lord jesus take over take over the hearts of everyone that is in attendance and even such that will yet hear the sound of our voice thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray now, before you sit, I would like us to sing just to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Singing high. 
Aleluya. 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 to serve your will to call to seek out your face to make proclamation of your present revelation position to a generation like this we thank you for the privilege that you have granted us we thank you we thank you and we ask tonight that you make for yourself a great name in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen. please you may have your seat turn your Bible to the book of Luke chapter 1 Luke chapter 1 Luke chapter number 1 Luke chapter number one. Uh, so I salute all the ministers of the gospel that are present, and because you are present, uh, the Bible study for the evening is going to be on the high level because our pastors are present. Now, so what I'm trying to do this evening is a brief training. It's a training. training. Yeah? Training. Yeah, so um, there are fresh insights that God wants to equip his church with so that we can have the capacity 
to represent him accurately in this time Luke chapter 1 verse 8 and it came to pass while he executed the priest office before God in the order of his course according to the custom of the priest office his Lord was to burn the incense when he went into the temple of the Lord and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense and when he saw him he was troubled and fear fell upon him and the angel said unto him fear not Zacharias for thy prayer is heard and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name John and thou shalt have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God the 17 talks about his equipping and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the, the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord and Zachariah said unto the angel whereby shall I know this for I am a, an old man and my wife is well stricken in years and the angel answered and said unto him I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and I'm sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings and behold thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things be performed because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their seasons okay so um, if if we will give the message for the evening a topic it will be interacting with the dimensions of God interacting with the dimensions of God <clears throat> If you are a student of the Bible you will find many places in Scripture where God gives us an open ticket an invitation to interact with the dimensions of God for instance the Bible says that we should come boldly onto the throne of grace the throne of grace is not in the physical location the throne of grace is domiciled in a dimension and God is inviting us expressly to come interface with the throne of grace sometime in the body of Christ I don't know if it's still obtainable in Uganda but sometime in the body of Christ there was this new revelation about the subject of grace and grace was revealed to be license license for for liberty unfortunately for the teachers of this trend of revelation uh, they did not take time to acknowledge the fact that grace is managed from a throne there is a government that is set up to determine the dispensing of the grace of God and to determine whether the grace that was received was either received in vain 
was either abused the abuse of grace is a situation where we continue perpetually in sin and hoping that the grace of God might abound are you there so there's a government that is set up that is responsible for the dispensing of grace and that is responsible for evaluating whether grace was adequately appropriated there are two systems revealed in scripture through which God dealt with humankind the first system which is the system that um, captures the Old Testament dispensation it's called the system of the law the thing about the law is that the law reveals the expectation from God of God for from humankind but the law does not make available the capacity to fulfill God's expectation so because of the incapacity that was rooted in the fall of man the law became an object of condemnation instead of being an object of life and that was not the intention of God so the Bible reveals that grace and truth came through Jesus Christ it was not just grace that came it was supposed to be balanced understood managed by the truth of the Word of God so when you handle grace without balancing it with truth it's like are you there are you with me you're with me stay with me we're going far this evening if by any means your child the child you brought to church is excited because of the presence of the Holy Spirit here and the child doesn't seem to have the capacity to exercise decorum the suggestion will be that you take the child outside in an environment where the child can receive adequate ventilation to express himself in the name of Jesus okay stay with me stay with me stay with me, stay with me. salt which is table salt is sodium chloride and when you separate the sodium from the chloride the chloride the chlorine or the chloride is it's a poisonous gas so if you take grace without balancing it with truth what you have is poisonous the Bible says that grace and truth came through Jesus Christ so grace became the system that drives that drives the new covenant so in the new covenant the laws of God have not changed but what God does in the dispensation of grace is that he gives us the equipment the capacity the ability to live up to the standards of God and the reason why the New Testament is more grievous in terms of expectation than the dispensation of the law is because if you understand the New Testament adequately the burden is not on the individual but the burden is on the grace of God Do you get that down? because of this there is an open invitation for us to come access grace by the throne of grace are you there so that's an invitation into a dimension in God I'm trying to tell us tonight that Christianity is sustainable if we make visits and if we make encounters with dimensions in the layer of God so there's an invitation for us to come boldly to the throne of grace hallelujah around the throne of grace first of all we obtain mercy so that we can find grace because if the Spirit of God moves, if you ever find the Spirit of God moving, just like He's moving in your life, He's giving you the ability to pray, He's giving the ability to live holy, He's giving you divine direction. Anytime you see the Spirit of God move, it is because God decided to have mercy. Because God will still be God if He refused to move. He will still be God. If He refuses to move, He will still be God. He will not diminish in his status but the reason why he chooses to move 
it's not even because you prayed it's because he showed mercy so when you come into that dimension to acquire grace first of all you will need to find obtain mercy but the, 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 the throne is called the throne of grace but in order for you to qualify for grace you must know how to obtain mercy first and when you obtain mercy you will find grace so once and again in scripture you find the invitations that God is handing out to us to come interact with his dimensions the scripture where we read it's a scripture of a man that came to fulfill his duty as a priest according to his cause and when that man began to burn incense you see there is a description of the part of the temple he was functioning from are you there we are not there you know so in the temple we have the outer court in the temple we have the holy place in the temple we have the holiest of all so from the description of where he was ministering because he was ministering before the brazen altar wait let me let's get it right no he was ministering before the altar of incense and the significance of incense in new testament theology is prayer if you go to heaven in the book of revelation chapter 4 chapter 5 you will see heaven you will see the administration that is obtainable in heaven and you will see what prayer looks like in heaven prayer doesn't ascend to heaven in human words the songs we sang now they do not ascend into heaven in the wordings with which we sang them because your mouth is not your altar your heart is your altar and there's a possibility that you can be singing something different and your heart sustains something different now god doesn't pick your response from your mouth he picks it from your heart and your heart is not capable of the kind of articulation that your mouth has are you there so when it ascends from your heart he ascends like incense into heaven in fact your prayers are received i don't have time to go into all those scriptures your prayers are received in heaven in form of incense god smells your prayer the way he smelled the sacrifice the offering of noah he smells your prayer he perceives your prayer so it is a heart transaction and your efforts are going to be received in another dimension are you there yes. meaning that there is a difference between the dimension that your prayers are offered and the dimension that your prayers are received there is a difference between the dimension that your prayers are uttered and the dimension where your prayers are answered so when this guy was standing at the altar of incense he had an encounter with an angel named gabriel and when the angel came and encountered him are you there this guy was in the presence of god before the altar of incense that's where prayer is manufactured and then the angel that encounters him also claims to be coming from the presence of god but the aspect of the presence of god that it was coming from is where prayers are answered now the guy that was on the altar of incense that was offering prayer on behalf of himself and the people that were praying outside you are not with me now i want us to go on a journey and part of my motivation for this is that we have pastors in our midst so it's not a normal service the angel came from the realm where prayers are answered came and encountered the man that was making prayers the man that was manufacturing prayers is doubting the answers to his own prayers
are you still following what i'm talking about because of the doubt that the angel perceived in zachariah the angel was compelled to introduce himself i i thought that introductions would have taken place before conversations begin but that was not necessary because the errand the angel was sent was not about him it was about god's response to a man that was interceding so there was no need for him to know the identity of the angelic personality that came with the response but the moment he noticed doubt he had to introduce himself say i for your information i'm it's obvious you don't know where your prayers go when you offer them you only know the texture of the incense as it leaves the altar of incense you don't know the protocol that is involved in seeing your prayer receive a response from the god of the whole earth my name is gabriel for your information and i stand in the presence of god i get to hear the whispers that come from the throne and what brought me to you is not a whisper it's an express decree that the throne felt you needed to know about that's why i'm here and i meet doubt i'm confronted with unbelief this introduction and the the things that proceeded thereafter was not part of the errand are you now the guy was dealing with a with a dimension in god and unknown to him it was sacrilege for you to doubt when that dimension appears he, he was not aware of that so the messenger discerned his doubt it led to an introduction of himself he led to a revelation of his quarter in the corridors of heaven that he stands before the presence of god and not every angel has that privilege i'm also a messenger that communicates the things that come out of the throne room into other realms i bring you glad tidings and you doubt me because of that the angel did not go back to heaven to ask if he had the authority to make him dumb it was a dimension that was dealing with a man he made the man became dumb because he interacted with a dimension and did not understand the protocol that was needed to profit from that dimension instead of positive things he came out of the temple dumb and from that time his communication mode changed he would need a a slate and chalk to be communicating with his wife it was because of his encounter with a dimension that he was not knowledgeable enough to adequately interact with that he found himself in that condition should i tell you something i know you know that as a minister of the gospel according to the book of ephesians chapter one the bible reveals that there are places in christ jesus and we're talking about locations we are talking about territory are you there have you read the scripture that says that the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run it therein and is safe good in the realm of the spirit there is a location called the name of the lord I think I need to reduce change my message in fact <laughs> I'll try one more time there is a location in the realm of the spirit called the name of the law that is a location it's a place you can run into when you arrive at the location called the name of the law it has its own will that location it is in that place that every knee bows it's a location in the realm of the spirit you, you can have
a prayer point you have your own prayer point say number one on my prayer list number two on my prayer list when you arrive at that location your prayer point cannot serve because uh, there is an emphasis that is already in that realm so your prayer point will need to bow we need to surrender to that place has its own will it has its own preferences it has its own emphasis your prayer point can hold as long as you have not arrived at that location because when you the proof that you are in the location is that every other thing bows to what is obtainable there every tongue confesses confesses the reality of the majesty that is trapped into that space part of what god wants to equip with his church with is the knowledge of how to interact with dimensions that is what will determine how much strength you carry meanwhile i need to warn you each di dimension has the protocol it has its own protocol so when you come into that dimension and god wants you to operate there to function there you will need to undergo some form of education to know how to handle the things that are obtainable in that dimension are you there god's will is that we should be able to interact with his dimensions and explore his dimensions like astronauts explore space that's god's will the depth of your capacity you know when you have a warlock the warlock is a wizard that is experienced very experienced he knows all the rituals he knows how to deal with the sun how to deal with the moon he knows how to deal with the forest he knows how to deal with the graveyard he knows how to deal with the mountains these planes i mentioned now is the planes from whence demonic power draws their strength so there are some dimensions of witches that only know how to draw power from the moon those are the ones that have the wisdom on how to establish altars on the moon i don't want to speak plainly there are a set of people that before i will let put it that you will not know what i'm talking about <laughs> These people, when they are fasting and they want to stop fasting, they need to check the moon first. So it is the alignment of the moon that determines their own activity on earth because the altar that they set up is on the moon. You are not with me. Are you following me? Yes. Now, uh, your strength, your capacity, when we check your lifestyle, we will know where you're operating from and the least place to operate from is the earth it's only adam the falling that operates is, is he was deposed from his place in the heavens because are you with me yes. man is the only creature that god created in the entire expanse of his enterprise that has a spirit and a body a body of earth his spirit gives him legitimacy to operate in the unseen realm and his body of earth gives him legitimacy to operate in the natural realm only man is like that even god is not like that because of this man can operate there and operate here so there's a duality of operation when it comes to man for those of you that are students of the book of john jesus was speaking to nicodemus in the book of john and jesus said no one has ascended into heaven at any time except the son of man that is in heaven he was speaking with nicodemus on earth but he was telling him that i am in heaven stay with me stay. Are, are you following yes. now we have not started the, i'm just trying to legitimize my my emphasis before we can start the journey are you there yes. now so his reality was domiciled in the heavens 
his reinforcement was going to come from the heavens his power was going to come from the heavens so he was using the resources of heaven to live his natural life that was how jesus lived this is a realm that is insufficient the natural world is insufficient the supernatural world is all sufficient so a man that the elements of this physical world cannot stop from fulfilling his destiny has access to reinforcement from a, a, a realm beyond time a realm beyond space a realm beyond matter now you see there so that was how jesus functioned and there was no situation that jesus found himself that did not have an answer to including when he was about to enter the temple and they came to him and said he was owing temple tax being a jew he wasn't a proselyte he was have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to jesus or you want to rededicate your life to jesus christ as your lord and savior then say this short prayer lord i admit i am a sinner i need and want your forgiveness I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you, if you have just said that prayer. You are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.